Hi, everybody. I'm Ronnie. Hello, and I'm Jenny, and we are... We are the Heart and Soul Sisters. You betcha. <laughs> All day long. All day long, every and day. twice on Sunday. <laughs> oh, How great. How are you? Great. Doing great. Yeah. Good. So, um, so we're coming to you today to talk about Oprah Winfrey, who does more wonderful things before breakfast than most people do in a week. Um, <laughs> she's we love really, you, Oprah. She's, she's out there trying to change the world. Um, it's fantastic. Yes. And so, um, so we want to talk about her TV series that uh, came out recently on Apple TV called The Me You Can't See, yes. uh, talking about mental health and well-being. And um, it's, a, it's a great... Uh, six episodes, right? There were six episodes. Five of them were kind of profiling um, the issues, uh, people telling their stories. And the sixth one was yes. kind of a panel and experts and talking about the path forward, I believe was the name of the, the episode. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, we just found it really powerful and hitting on some things that we've been talking about over the course of our, you know, two seasons of podcasting. And uh, we did do a, an episode in season one on anxiety and depression where, Jenny, you opened up about your struggles. But there's, we felt like there was, you know, there's always more to talk about here. And, and her series was a good prompt to do that. So we're going to kind of revisit m mental health and well-being more broadly in this, in this episode. Yes, absolutely. So I, I know that I've, I've shared that that's something that I've struggled with since the age of eight, um, anxiety and depression. And I know that this runs in our family. It, mm -hmm. um, we certainly, it goes back multiple generations uh, that we know of from just right. from hearing stories of different family members mm -hmm. um, from our parents and also both of our parents struggling with depression. Um, so, so I, I wanted to talk about this in part because this is something that I, you know, is near and dear to my heart in my patients. It's something I recognize and and certainly have treated for the last 24 years and that the biggest the biggest struggle that so many people have is not just accepting a diagnosis of of a mental illness but um having to take medication for it if if needed and also the lack of support f that is often you know, found in their, in their immediate family and close friends right. and, and how they are oftentimes shamed for taking medication in the first place. And, and the, the common, you know, messages that I, I seem to hear over and over from patients is, um, you should just get over it. You, you know, why, why are you taking something for anxiety? You know, just, just do something, do something, get up and, and move or, or, um, you know, you don't need a pill. Right. And, and then for depression, which there are different types of depression. And, you know, some of them are, as we talked about before, are triggered from traumatic experiences. Right. And, and others are more of a, of a inherited, you know, have an inherited characteristic, you know, trait. And, and what I find so, so frustrating is that um, even even among, you know, people in the healthcare community, there's, there is a, I've seen a, a mentality of, of, well, you don't, you don't need, you don't need any medication, <laughs> just, just toughen up, you know, and and it's so far beyond that when we're talking about chronic depression. And so I wanted, I wanted for you and I to, to kind of go over some of the things that, that can be stumbling blocks, you know, for roadblocks for people. And I know for oftentimes kids in high school and then going on to college, there's so many that, um, you know, just the, just the transition of becoming an adult and going off to college can trigger a lot of different mental illnesses to start to, um, surface. 
right. certainly depression and anxiety are 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 fairly common. Mm -hmm. But all also kids that maybe got through school um, with attention deficit disorder, you know, to varying degrees, without medication, once they get to college, they're just they're drowning yeah. in in the work and the and they can't they can't focus. And so for them to go through the hoops that oftentimes universities make them do, they they would have to go see a clinical psychologists go through a global assessment and these are these are tests that you know take several hours and sometimes a couple of days for an individual to complete right and then and then you're talking about you know more than a few thousand dollars just to go to be tested and certified that yep you've got anxiety yep you've got depression or yep you have ADD um, in order to be able to take tests in a quiet room by yourself in right. order to have extra time. And so I think it's a huge crisis for, you know, we, we look at the, well, you, you can speak better than I can about the dropout rate, but I know that, um, watching patients that I have, that I have taken care of and transition from high school to college, asking me to write letters on their behalf. Um, you know, right. so that they can have more time. And, and it's just, we don't make it easy on people yeah. Yeah. at all that are, that are struggling with, with mental health issues. We, we do not make it easy as an institution, uh, as a society, we, and, and that is where the danger is of people feeling so alone. I, I think, I know I've, talked about that before you feel when you are living with depression and anxiety you feel like you really have nobody no that wants to hear it nobody wants to know yeah. they, they ask you how you're doing and you're supposed to smile and say great i'm wonderful how are yeah. you <laughs> you know and put a smile on it and i know personally that even at some of my worst times with depression um People had no idea because I love to laugh and I love to smile, but they had no idea that I was struggling with suicidal thoughts. And, and, and that's in part because we don't make it easy on people with mental health issues right. to, to be honest. And it's uncomfortable. Yeah. We, we don't know what to say to them. So we'd rather not hear it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's that's the that's what's so isolating about mental health issues, and that's that's really what I as I was watching the episodes um, of Oprah and um, Prince Harry talking with different individuals and their team talking with different individuals and their and their stories, I. I you know, I kept saying things like right on brother, right on sister. <laughs> I feel I feel you. I feel what you're going through. I I understand. Right. I understand that feeling of isolation and feeling separate and feeling that you really, you really have no one to turn to, um, right. socially for support. And that's, that's, that's the sad part that I, that I think can be, can be helped, you know, that we don't, we don't have to have the answers for, for people that are trying to learn to live with their with their mental health concerns or diagnoses but just being present for them and just accepting them and letting them know that they're not alone is a is a huge first step right i i was struck by the the stories there are a lot of um you know stories of individuals they like they would have their names right across the street like the screen like you're telling their story um they were most of them young adults um, so mm -hmm. that, that developmental time, as you were saying, is already such a challenge when you're, you know, moving from your parents' home to your own space or to college and, uh, you know, trying to figure out who am I, right? So the classic questions of adolescence and young adulthood and, um, college campuses are not equipped for the numbers of people who have, uh, have, have mental health challenges, and so that took me back as someone who's, who uh, works with college students. I mean, I know what the resource situation is on my campus. It's like most campuses, there's not enough, not enough to go around, 
right? I mean, right. it's not that we don't have services. It's that the demand often uh, is greater than the capacity that we have. Um, the other thing that really struck me, you know, you talked about the medication and the shaming of people who are on medication. The other thing that came out in some of these stories that was being that were being told is that we are oftentimes so there. So there's this this pressure not to medicate because it, it, it's you're accepting the label of a mental health diagnosis and that's stigmatizing and you're weak because you rely on medication, which we would never say to a diabetic or someone with high blood pressure or whatever who, Heavens, no. you know, who, who needs medication. Of course not. Right. Um, we've, we've made that point before, but then there's the other pressure uh, or the, the sort of the, the countervailing dynamic of you've got people who are being medicated for what are essentially symptoms or the result of trauma. Yes. Or grief, right? So there were, so there were some mm -hmm. stories they told that were not about anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, you know, those sorts of things, bipolar disorder, um, but just about grief, about, mm -hmm. you know, the trauma associated with losing someone early or losing someone unexpectedly and how that can just derail, derail you, right? Derail mm -hmm. you and, and, and really harm your well-being. And so mm -hmm. to me, that really resonated with, us, you know, and, and the kinds of things that we're talking about is that that many of these things really just mask um, trauma, yes. right? There, so, so we're we're treating something, or shaming something, or in some cases ignoring something that's really an indicator of something deeper, something that preceded the anxiety, the depression. Um, and, it, and it's not, it's not always a, a simple story either, right? It might be that like right. there was one young woman I remember who her father died suddenly when she was in her, she was 15 or 16, just dropped dead of a heart attack. She was very, yeah. very close to him. And in the aftermath, she uh, received the diagnosis of schizophrenia. Now there's yeah. probably a reasonable chance that diagnosis is going to come anyway, but there was that triggering or precipitating event that, that accelerated uh, sort of a spiral for her a downward spiral for her in her life and so sure. it's not like an either or situation in many cases we've all got multiple things going on right wellness is mm -hmm. biopsychosocial so what's yes. organically going on with us uh, how do how does our personality or you know, certain traits that we carry how does that interact with our environment if we're being abused in some way or have some sort of trauma you know that in and of itself, even if there's nothing else going on from a biopsycho standpoint, can trigger this. So it's just the complexity of it. I just, I just really appreciate the way um, uh, that panel and Oprah and Harry as producers uh, mm -hmm. really tried to show that complexity yes. of um, the paths, right? Uh, how how people end up struggling and needing yes. help. Right, whether it's suppressed childhood sexual abuse or it's a sudden death of a beloved parent, or you know, like there's there's just so much uh, in people's lives that can that plays into what you know when somebody presents in front of you, a healthcare provider, the tendency is to look for a linear path, right? This straight cause and effect. Okay, you've got this. This is what I do for it, um, and. It, sometimes you need to do a little bit of, of digging, right? You have to go beyond that. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Always, right? Oh, not just sometimes, yeah. always, right? It's not, right. it's not, it's not so straightforward, particularly what you can present in the 10, 15, 20 minute appointment, um, which, exactly. which is what contributes to the, the crisis that we have is that we're not a, we don't, we don't treat um, mental health with the same, just flat out resources and attention. Oh, to heck. Physical health. No, we don't. There, we are so lacking in facilities. For example, when someone is, is in a crisis, we can't find a bed for them. We, you know, my husband's a, a sheriff deputy in the county we live in, very rural area. And they have a 72 hour window when they assess a patient through the ER. And it is, it happens where, that person was assessed, they're in crisis, whether it's bipolar and they're manic and they're, they're, you know, they're a danger to themselves or, um, 72 hours will go by. can't find a facility anywhere, you know, upper Michigan, right. lower Michigan for them. 
And, and so they have to recertify them again. So there they are, uh, you know, for another 72 hour, right. you know, window trying to find a place for them. And it's, it's heartbreaking yeah. that these, these folks, I mean, just finding a counselor, let alone a, a psychiatrist is it's, you know, the wait time for, for people in our area can be up to a year Wow. to get, to get into a psychiatrist. Yeah. Um, so it it's it's yeah it, it's a little better but especially coming through the pandemic i mean there are more people who are definitely are struggling with anxiety and depression yeah and 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 other mental health issues and we we just don't have the means to help them the way they need to be helped right and and that's really sad to say that in our in our society in our culture and and that some people don't care when they hear those statistics you know yeah. they 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 don't they don't think it's that important and yeah and it, and it is and, it and affects it, it affects you physically not just it's not just mental it affects your physical health Right. Well, I'm thinking as you're talking, I'm thinking about just how, what a great job again, Oprah and Harry did about, okay. and the people that, that agreed to be, um, a part of this, right. They let cameras into their homes and showed themselves yes. in some cases doing things that, that, you know, they, they could face ridicule and shame for, right. Um, I'm thinking mm -hmm. in particular of the young woman who is expected to win gold in boxing at the Olympics, right? Yeah, and she struggles yeah. with obsessive compulsive disorder and hers manifests itself in cleanliness and she goes through all these cleaning supplies and products and and just how how much of her life it takes over. I mean, they did a beautiful job of just showing what the impact is, right? When you think about depression, you might think, well, I feel sad, maybe I feel a little tired or sluggish or lethargic. Anxiety, well, I'm a little hepped up and maybe I'm more nervous and I worry about things more. It's like, it, the magnitude, it's, it's orders of magnitude um, worse for many people than what those of us who have not received one of those diagnoses can even imagine. And so just mm -hmm. showing, showing the impact, the actual impact it has on people's lives, uh, I think was, it was just beautifully done um, with such love on the part of the people who created it and such courage on the part of the people who uh, participated. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's really very moving. Yes, absolutely. I, th I think the one thing to me that was missing, and maybe that's be I was sensitized to it because of you and I and what we've been trying to do this last year or so, year and a half probably now at this point, uh, with our podcasts and so on and our writing, is that they certainly talked about family in from the sense of supporting people so the the, the olympic athlete her sister and her parents were supportive and the, the young woman who was diagnosed uh, with schizophrenia after the death of her father she had her mother for support so there are lots of people who had who had family members who seemed not to have a mental uh, health diagnosis and were trying to support them but i would love and there's some there's some buzz that 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 oprah and harry might do you know, more around this topic, I would really love to see them look at um, families as opposed to like an individual and then the, the, you know, the families as a support system. There are families where there's trauma across multiple generations or across all the yes. siblings or, you know, so that's, that's a whole nother level uh, or, a or a different dynamic perhaps to to understanding just how widespread this problem is because we mm -hmm. what we need in order to have real movement on this topic is a consensus and understanding and awareness of just how pervasive and how debilitating the problem is right they and yes. they talk about average childhood experiences as we have and you mm -hmm. know more than 60 percent of us have at least one um, and a significant percentage, something like 20, 25% have three or more. And so that's, that's a lot of people. That's yeah. tens of millions of people with trauma. 
And like these things we've been talking about, the mental health diagnosis is just one thing that can be an right. outcome of this trauma. And so, um, so I think that this is, it's so, uh, I just, <laughs> just feel like I want to so, burst, burst with the urgency of it, right? It's so far reaching. It affects so many of us. Yeah, it, yeah. So it affects our relationships. Um, it, it, you know, it affects our physical health when you've got, um, you know, as you said before, the mental health diagnoses have an impact on our physical health. And, uh, I just, we, for example, we don't realize how much heart disease ties in with this. Right. You know, it is a huge comorbidity for heart disease. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we, ju we just, the, the impact on, on millions of people it, it just it really it really is a big it really is huge yeah. and far reaching and yeah i would really love to i would really love to if they do another another season oprah and and prince harry i would really love to for them to look more at the effects on sibling relationships in part because of of what we're doing but it, yeah. it it's it's that is so impactful and because if you think about and it, the, I'm sorry, finish your thought. No, go ahead. No, I was also, and, and, and the, and the, the, the traumatic childhood experiences, adverse childhood experiences and, and the cycle breaking. Yes. That, that many, many people like us had to do. Yeah. And, and I would love for them to look at that and talk about that more. Right. Because because one thing, again, that stood out is you've got these individuals that they're highlighting and the support system that their family has, right? What if it's not one individual? What if the whole family is is in trouble, right? The whole family is, is, is struggling, is suffering. How do we address that? Exactly. Right? What, if, what if you've got, <laughs> we've joked over the years that we're like the blind leading the blind, and our, yeah. and our line, when if we get a new idea, we just say, oh, we should do this. Well, how do we do this? I don't know. Well, well what are we trying to accomplish with this? I don't know. It just seems like we, we should do this thing. We should investigate it. And, <laughs> and, and then we'll stop and we'll say, we don't know what we're doing, but we're doing it, right? That, we did our first podcast. That's what we said. We don't know what we're doing, but we're doing it. Same so, mantra. Look. So, like, you know, when you have the blind leading the blind, when you don't have someone that's maybe – healthy can be uh, an anchor or a ground, right? A, gr a ground, yeah. a loving presence for, for someone who's struggling, lost their way, you know, whatever the situation is. How do you do that? How do you navigate that? And that's part of, I mean, that's what we've been trying to do. You trust your and, gut. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you check you each other, do, you validate each other. Yeah. And, try to do the next best thing. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, the next step. Okay. What's the next step? Yeah. And we bounce that off each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so, cause sometimes you are, it, it's the entire systems, right? It's the entire family system that you're trying to help support rescue. Um, you know, uh, salvage. Yeah. Salvage what you can. That's yeah. That's a whole different, that's a whole different level of yes, intervention is. and support. Right. I mean, yeah. in some ways it's easier because we've said all along that having each other to share memories, to validate what was going on, made it easier to recognize the trauma and to try to find some normality and stability for ourselves and the new families we were creating at that time. Uh, right. But there are so many people who just know things are off, wrong, not good and don't know how to identify it, what to do about it. That's yeah. again, that's the next level. That's the next level of trying to, trying to raise awareness about mental health, because as you said, it tend, there, there tends to be a biological component for many of these diagnoses, which means that there's going to be more than one person in the family. And of course, you're talking about trauma. It's extremely unlikely that one child will be abused, but the others will not be. Just watching Absolutely. someone be abused is trauma, it's right? traumatizing. Watching Absolutely. one parent abuse the other is one of the adverse childhood experiences. 
Um, and, I, and I can tell you from the research that for, for boys, uh, the best predictor for whether they will be abusers when they grow up is not whether their parents beat them, but whether they watch their father beat their mother. Yeah. That is a greater predict, greater predictive factor. Yeah. So, so absolutely. Um, there's, there's way too much trauma. And, um, I, I love that they, that they touched on that. I'd like to see, I'd like to see more of that. I'm listening to, I'm not done with yet, which is why I'm not going to really talk about it, but Oprah's also done a, a book with Dr. Bruce Lipton, um, which I know you're listening to too. Yes. Um, and they, they do a lot more of this. They, they are really focusing on trauma and resilience with children. Yes. Um, yes. so I would love to see Oprah and, and Bruce Perry is one of the advisors on their board and he's, uh, you know, uh, featured a bit in the series, but I would love to see if they're going to do a second season to kind of gear more towards that book because yeah. there's so much good information there about what we know about the neurobiology of kids who experience trauma as well as their ability to recover from that trauma. Yes. Um, so yeah, there's, it's just, I, I, important, I, important work. This is yes. such important work. And I just, and, and I absolutely love Oprah and Prince Harry for bringing this forward and, and bringing this, this series forward for, to share this with the world. It's so very important. It is. And, and it's global. It's beautiful because they look at people from various countries, a yes. like young refugee boy from Syria. And mm -hmm. it, just, it, I mean, the gentleman from India and yes. the amazing work that he, how he has helped take his his trauma and turn it into blessings to yeah. help other people it just is beautiful story yeah so so moving oh my yeah. gosh yeah yeah it's just it's it's i mean it's it's beautiful and i appreciated it so much and also sadly it's just the tip of the iceberg right there's so much more we need to do so much more yeah. to talk about uh, regarding these issues and the impact not on just just on individuals but on people who are connected, right, either by the biology of inherited um, mental health diagnoses uh, or mental health issues uh, or just the trauma of the social environment, the psychosocial environment. Yes. So. so thank you. Yeah, thank you. <sighs> I have There's so I much have, more work to do. <laughs> there is, there is. You know, I, I have to say that that I, I binged the show once I found it. Mm -hmm. And so I watched it within just a couple of days and um, finished it a couple of days ago. So it was very fresh for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel, I feel heavy, you know, and I, I don't know why it's not, it's not that, it's not that it necessarily sparked some memory for me or, that I saw myself in these people, like their stories were similar enough to mine that I felt like I really identified with them. Uh, maybe it's just a, a collective trauma sort of energy. I don't know what it is exactly, but I'm just like. <sighs> I did, I did, I did identify with so many of the folks on, you know, on the show sharing their stories and, and, and it reminded me of, patients that I've seen through the years and it so yeah I, I it affected me very similarly I had just felt my energy drained and yeah and but not not like I'm in a depression but more like right just feeling just knowing that collectively like you said there are just so many people out there that are have felt alone have felt disconnected have felt cut off or didn't really have the support that they needed. And I would love to see that change. And I just think this show is a wonderful step in that direction, but there's so much more that needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's done beautifully and with compassion, but it, it does, it does feel like it's kind of maybe that, maybe that's it. Maybe it's kind of the energy of the collective that I'm feeling. With this, you know, um, I don't know. Well, if I figure it out, I'll let you know. <laughs> to be continued. Yes. <laughs> as always. Yes. 
Alrighty. Well, maybe we should wrap up for today. I think that would be a great idea. Thank you so much, everyone, for for tuning in and listening, and we hope that uh, you will give this show a listen. Yeah, absolutely. Well Check it. out what Oprah and Harry did. It's really, like I said, it's beautiful. For mm -hmm. all the pain that's there, there's a lot of beauty as well. Absolutely. So, Well, until next time, Jen, what are we doing? We are wishing you so much love, mm -hmm. so much light. And many, 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 many blessings. Yes. Be well. Be well. Mm -hmm.